All right, I want to preach on confidence today. Confidence. So why don't we go to the book of Hebrews and um, chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10. And verse 35. And the writer says this. Do not throw away your confidence. Because it has great reward. Do not let go of your confidence. Because confidence has a great reward. I mean this is a command isn't it? Do not. It's a command to to not throw away or let go of your confidence. But then... He actually, the second part of the statement I think is very, very powerful because he says your confidence has great reward. Do you know that um, confidence achieves far more than what our gifts and abilities and talents can achieve? I mean, I know people who are very talented but are not accomplishing much with their lives because they lack confidence to actually step out and do it. But I also know, like, from my own life, that, um, you know, I'm a musician and so on, um, but I've only, I believe, only ever been an average singer, but I've made a living as a musician. Because it's not about the level of talent, it's actually about your confidence. And often we look at life and we look at ourselves and, 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 um, and if we don't interpret things correctly, we can erode our confidence and um, if we just think that, well, I've only got this ability or I can only do this or, you know, certain people don't respond well to me or whatever it might be or I've got these challenges in my family or in my health or whatever it might be. And, you know, if we measure the possibilities on the, at that kind of level, then we're not going to get the reward we could get because confidence, the godly kind of confidence, takes us beyond ourselves. Does that make sense? Yeah, the godly kind of confidence. Now, I'm not talking about a, you know, just a positive mental attitude or, and I'm certainly not talking about being arrogant or, you know, or egotistical or any of that kind of stuff. But, you know, the Apostle Paul says, don't throw away your confidence. Confidence is very important because confidence produces outcomes. Yeah? Confidence produces outcomes in the workplace. It produces outcomes in business. It produces outcomes in ministry. It produces outcomes in relationships. If we have a confidence in God and in who he is in us and what he can do through us, then there is rewards that come. We actually achieve things we couldn't otherwise achieve. And so the writer to the Hebrews here says, don't throw away your confidence. Wow. Don't throw it away. Don't let go of it. Because if we let go of it, we're not going to get the reward. Now, the Apostle Paul was, you know, he was an amazing man. He learned to walk humbly. He carried something in his flesh, which we are not sure exactly what it was, but he asked God to take it away. And God said, no, I'm not going to, because you're going to learn how to um, find strength and sufficiency in, in my grace. And... Um, you know, and, and, and this man, he, he said, well, in the natural, I've got all these things that could go for me, but that's not the key. The key is the grace of God in his life. And, you know, he actually had influence in the, in the Jewish nation and uh, could have been a, a, a great man in history amongst the Jews, but God called him to be an apostle to the Gentiles. And so he had to work cross-culturally. And there's so many things that could have worked against Paul. But you know, the thing about Paul was that he found a confidence in God that caused him to be one of the greatest men of the kingdom in all of history. And he himself said that it wasn't because of his training, you know, as a Pharisee and and all the, the things, the status that he had and all that kind of stuff... You know, it, it, he, he said time and time again, in effect, it was all about his confidence in God and who God was in and through him. Yeah? And he, he got to the end of his life in ministry, and he's the one who said, I have run the race. I have fought the fight. But then he says, there's a crown laid up for me. It's the same principle. that He, he was saying, well, there's the reward. It's there. You see, reward doesn't come first. Reward comes afterwards. Isn't that true? 
Yeah. And so the reward for us is not something that is going to come up front. It's going to be the, an outcome of how we live and how we do the, you know, the work of God. And Paul's saying, well, the writer, whoever it actually was, is saying, don't throw away your confidence because that crown that's laid up or that outcome that God wants to produce, it's going to come as a result of confidence, not just gifts and abilities. It's going to come because of confidence, not just our, our position or, or the power and authority we have or the personality we have or anything else. There is a, there is a, a key to life and a key in the kingdom, which is confidence, and it produces outcomes. You know, when we lack confidence, we withdraw. Isn't that true? When we lack confidence, doubt fills our mind. When we lack confidence, we don't give everything we've got. And so confidence actually robs us of the reward, just generally in life. But if we are talking about a different kind of confidence than just natural confidence, then lack of confidence actually robs us in the things of God. Wow. Wow. Have you ever thought about that? (laughs) Lack of confidence. So then, what becomes the basis for this confidence? If confidence produces the reward, if confidence produces outcomes, if confidence produces the blessing of God or or is a, a catalyst for it, then... What's the basis for this kind of confidence? I'm going to go back um, a bit in this chapter, in chapter 10, and we're going to look at, uh, from verse 16. He says, this is the covenant, and he's quoting Old Testament here, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. I will put my laws in their heart, and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of sins, there is no longer an offering of sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness or confidence to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way, which he consecrated through the veil, that is his flesh. I'm going to stop there today. Do you know, he gives us some, some keys here because he, says, he quotes the Old Testament and says a couple of things. Then he says, therefore, on the basis of this, we confidently or boldly come into the presence of God. And uh, it's interesting, Paul, what you were sharing around communion about when we're right with God, we're comfortable with ourselves and we're comfortable in his presence. And it, that, that ties right in with what we're talking about here. That if our lives are, are right with God, then we have confidence before God. We can confidently come into his presence. That's an amazing thing when you think about it. Because he is a God of love, but he also is a God of justice. He's a God of judgment also. And like any king, he has the power of life and death. But more than any earthly king, he has the power of life and death because he has the power of eternal life and death. Yeah? And so how can we be confident with a God who has that kind of power? Well, he gives us the keys here. And he actually says we can boldly, confidently come right into the throne room, into the intimate place, into the secret place, right into the place that normally is not available for the average person in relationship with the king. That's really what he's saying here. So how can we have that kind of boldness and confidence? How can we have the confidence that actually is going to produce God's outcomes in and through our lives, going to produce the reward, going to, going to actually be a catalyst for the blessing of God to flow? Well, he gives us the keys here. The first one is he's made a covenant with us. God's made a covenant with us. Yeah. Do you know, um, in the Old Testament, there is the, the story of Esther. And of course, she became the wife of the king. But she and her people were were slaves and they were captives. So this was an incredible thing to happen that she became the the wife of the king. But then there was all kinds of protocols. She was not allowed to to approach the king. She was not allowed to approach the king's court. She had to be invited. But here's the thing. She was in covenant with the king because she was married to him. He had made a covenant with her. And of course there came the day where she had to actually break the protocol for the sake of her people and God gave her favour. But the issue for me is there was a covenant in place. 
And you know what? God, the, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, he has made a covenant with you and I. The reason we can have confidence and not throw it away, the first one I want to talk about today, is the fact that God, who created everything that exists, who is you know, the Alpha and the Omega, he's always existed himself and always will exist, he's the everlasting one, this one who is greater than anything we can actually understand, he's actually chosen to make a covenant with you and me. Wow. If we can get a revelation of what that means, we will never throw away our confidence. Because our confidence isn't in our ability. It's not in, in, in what we, our human strength or capacities. But our confidence is a different thing when we understand that God who rules over all things and created all things and has all authority and all power, he made a covenant with you and me. I don't know what that does for you, but that, that is both humbling but also incredibly exciting at the same time. Isn't that true? Yeah. But if God's made a covenant with us, then none of our weaknesses matter in the long run. Yeah, we have to deal with stuff in our lives that's out of order. You know, we, we have to repent of things. We have to allow God to change us. We have to, um, you know receive his mercy and grace and, and, and be growing more and more into his image. We, ha we, we need to understand how to actually allow him to, to live through us and so on. But you know, when we understand that God has made a covenant with us, then we can actually open up and allow everything that he has and is to actually begin to transform us and to change us and to override the, you know, the, uh, the, the flesh so that we live in Christ, so we become complete in him, so that his righteousness and his character and his life becomes ours and you know we can have the confidence that this is possible because God has made a covenant with us he is committed absolutely to transforming our lives he's committed absolutely to our lives bearing fruit wow isn't that good he is committed absolutely to us being everything we can be wow that's awesome isn't it don't throw away your confidence but you see, without a revelation and a conviction about the fact that God's made a covenant with us, then we can sometimes hit things that cause us to withdraw and have doubt and fear and all kinds of stuff, and we begin to lose confidence and we begin to actually toss it out the window. Wow. And all that does is it robs us of the reward of the, good, the great outcomes that are possible in God. But I want to say to you today, God's made a covenant with you. He's made a covenant with you and me, of course. <laughs> I'm grateful I'm not exempt. <laughs> He's made a covenant. He's totally and absolutely committed to his relationship with us. Yeah. A revelation of that alone causes us to rise in confidence. Because everything God says is possible if we understand that he's made a covenant with us. Yeah, isn't that good? Yeah. Everything that he has destined us to be and to do is possible because he's made a covenant with us. Yeah. Number two. He says, verse 16, I will put my law into their heart and in their minds I will write them. So God has made a covenant with us, but then you know what he does? He actually imprints upon our lives the pattern of his kingdom. He imprints it on us. You know, this, this morning we, uh, you know, we were given this material when we came in the door. Before that had anything on it, it was just white paper. But then somebody sent a message to the printer And a whole lot of words and pictures and colours, etc., got imprinted upon this blank white paper. Do you know, God doesn't just save us to go to heaven. He doesn't just save us so that we you know, can think, well, one day I'm going to live in eternity, it's going to be wonderful. That is true, but there's more than that. God makes a covenant with us, and then he backs it up by actually imprinting himself upon our lives. 
He imprints his ways upon us. He imprints it upon our lives so that what was, you know, once we get saved, all the, you know, the, the sin is gone. We can learn to grow in him and, and walk in him and so on. But then what he does is he says, I want to write my laws. I want to write my statutes, my strategies, my way of doing things. I want to write it in your heart and on your mind. I want to imprint you with myself. Wow. Is this um, building your confidence this morning? Yeah. Our lives have been imprinted, engraved, if you will. You know, Judy and I have just been in Europe, and everywhere in Europe there's, you know, there's statues and all kinds of things, you know. But there's, there's stuff that was actually carved in stone. We saw stuff from before the time of Christ. Now that's, an, that's being imprinted. Carved in stone. Inscriptions. From even before the time of Christ. But here's the thing. God wants to do more than imprint us for a couple of thousand years. He wants to imprint our lives for this life and for eternity. Yeah. I think this is, this is just incredible that God would actually take his ways, his principles, how he operates, who he is, and actually carve it into our lives, engrave it upon our lives. Do you know, if, if God does that, then we can have great confidence. Because this is not about what do I do? How do I do it? This is about we go to the one who has all knowledge and has all understanding and we allow him to actually impart it into our lives. We allow him to continually add the imprint into our lives. Don't throw away your confidence. If you're facing stuff that you don't know how to deal with, get a download from the one who knows how to deal with it. Let him imprint his way. His way, yeah? Why would he do that? Because he's covenanted with us. And because he's covenanted with us, he wants to give us everything we need. Don't throw away your confidence. Get a fresh revelation of the fact that God's made a covenant with us and allow him to continue to imprint himself and his ways upon your life so that we become more and more like him and so therefore we live more and more his way and therefore every situation will ultimately have his plan and purpose working out through it. See, we can have confidence. Yes, there are things that are, that are beyond our control in life. There are things that are bigger than us in life. There are things that we don't have the answers to at times. But we can still have confidence. Not because of who we are, but because of who he is. Who he is to us and who he is in us and who he is through us. Because he's made a covenant with us. And he wants to continually imprint himself upon us. Isn't that good? Number three. He says, verse 17, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. You're off the chain. <laughs> You're off the chain. Do you know, we, uh, we bought a pup a few years ago. And... Uh, he grew to become a very big dog, too big for our yard and too big for us. <laughs> he nearly ripped my left arm out of its sh shoulder socket one day when I was walking him and uh, an another very aggressive dog came running up to, um, you know, to, to the uh, front fence of the yard it was in and, and uh, I didn't see it in time. Uh, and, uh, and I'm sort of holding the leash of our dog and next thing he's off, you know. And... Um, but uh, he, he now lives with uh, Judy's brother's place and he's got two or three acres of land and so on. But you know, the thing is that he loves it there because he's off the leash. <laughs> yeah. Only problem at the moment is that there's a lot of other dogs around that are on heat. So he's really interested in getting over the fence. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. We are off the leash. Unfortunately, a lot of us perhaps haven't cut off certain things that tie us back 
or allowed God to do that. But his plan is, not only does he forgive our sins, but he remembers them no more. Man, people remember. We remember. But guess what? God actually forgets. Isn't that incredible? See, when Paul says, therefore we can come boldly into his presence, it's not because we've become perfect in ourselves. It's because of what he has done. He's made a covenant with us and he has embarked on a process of imprinting himself upon our lives and he says, I can't even remember what you were like before. Yeah. I mean, this is amazing, really, isn't it? When you think about it. So when Paul says, do not throw away your confidence, it's on this basis. When he says, you can confidently come into the throne room of Almighty God, it's on this basis. It's not because of anything we've done. But it's because we have accessed and appropriated everything he's done. But you know, when God lets us off the leash, he actually throws the leash so far away no one can retrieve it. No fear of going back on it. That's how we're supposed to live. No fear of being back on the leash, but free. Free to go forward. Free to actually pursue the outcomes that God has called us to. to. Free to pursue things that will actually produce the blessing of God in other people's lives as well as our own. Free to pursue the things of God. Completely free. That's why it says if the Son sets you free, you are truly, completely free indeed. Completely free. Now we look at ourselves and we see you know, our own past sins, failures, mistakes. We look at ourselves some days and we see our character flaws and all those kind of things. But you know, when God looks at us, he sees what he's done for us. Wow. This doesn't absolve us of responsibility for dealing with stuff in our life, but what it does do is it actually gives us the confidence that we can deal with the stuff in our lives. Isn't that good? We can be free. We can be changed. We can become mature. We can accomplish great things for God, not because of what we've done, but by accessing and appropriating what he's done. Wow. Not a single one of us in this room is perfect. And that is so great. Do you know why it's great? Because if we were perfect, Jesus would never have had to come. (laughs) Come on. Isn't that true? But because we're not perfect, he came. And what he came to do was to make a way for the covenant that was in God's heart to come into place for us. Wow. And to then begin a process of imprinting himself and his ways upon our lives. And to take us off the leash, to break every chain every shackle, every bondage, to set us free so that we can live in him and for him with real freedom. This is the basis of confidence. But this is why the writer says, don't throw away your confidence. Because not only does confidence produce outcomes and produce reward, which is what the Bible says, but it's a certain kind of confidence. It's a confidence that is not a positive mental attitude, not going off to a motivational speech and coming out all fired up. Do you know, I could have, could have preached a, just a full-on motivational thing this morning and you'd wake up tomorrow morning and probably feel ripped off <laughs> because it doesn't last. But the truth of who God is and what he's done for us and how we can access it, appropriate it and walk it out, this is something that actually can be built into our lives and can produce outcomes in the years to come for our lives. This is a different kind of confidence altogether. This is a confidence that comes from what he has done and what he continues to do. And I want to say again, God has made a covenant with you. Isn't that awesome? Is, is this 
getting into your heart this morning. I, I've, I've really felt in the last week or so that there was going to be many of us today who would need a revelation of these things. That God has made a covenant with you. And what that means is he's not going to change his mind. He does want to change us, but he won't change his mind about us. Isn't that good? And he wants to change us from the perspective that he wants us to become more and more like him. He wants to imprint himself upon our lives so that when people see us, they see him. Yeah. And not only that, but he wants us to live in freedom. The freedom of knowing that the past is actually past, that when we repent and come to him, that not only are we forgiven, but we can be actually free from the bondage to the things we've repented of. We can actually be changed and be changed from glory to glory so that the image of God is more and more revealed in and through us. Amen? This builds confidence. It's a confidence that means we can stand before a righteous and holy God with no fear because we're free. It is a confidence that we can stand before anybody because, as Paul was sharing around communion, when we're right with God, we're comfortable with ourselves. We're confident in, in who we are. Yeah. We're free. Are you free this morning? Yeah. We're free. We are free people. Because he's covenanted with us. And he imprints himself upon our lives. And he releases us so that we can live confidently and produce the outcome so in his power and strength we can actually achieve the reward don't throw away your confidence because you're going to lose the outcomes you're going to lose the possibilities you, and you can end up losing hope and faith and and so on and you walk in, in walking in fear and uncertainty and doubt and so on is just the worst way to live do you know to be confident because of the fact that he's made a covenant he's imprinting himself more and more upon our lives and he has freed us and we don't have to go back into bondage ever again we can live free and stay free Man, that gives us a confidence to, to live differently. Gives us a confidence to be everything we're destined to be. Wow. Amen? Come on, let's stand and pray this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Whom the sun sets free is truly free. Yeah, truly free. Hallelujah. It's a process in God because it's a growth and development thing and it's a relationship. But the truth is still the same. He's in the business of setting people free. Yeah. We can be free. No matter what the past has been, no matter what issues there might be in your life today, no matter what mountains you might be facing, no matter what flaws you might see in yourself or others might see, the truth is that in him we can be free. We can be free. Yeah. He wants us to be free people. Yeah. Free people. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Lord, I pray for a revelation of these things today. Because, Lord, they're foundational to our walk with you. God, I pray for a revelation of the fact that you initiated covenant with us. While we were still in our sin, you gave your life for us to start that process. Lord, we thank you for that today. And, Lord, we thank you that then you don't just leave us to kind of struggle to figure it out but you come and you imprint your ways upon our lives you write them into our hearts and our minds you change how we think you change the structure of our hearts because you imprint yourself upon us and you set us free so that we can go forward confidently in you and live this kingdom life in all its fullness and lord this morning i pray for those who who need freedom Lord, that, that uh, as we reach out to you right now in faith, Lord, that firstly revelation will come 
But then secondly, O oh God, that faith will rise in our hearts to lay a hold of these truths and to, to appropriate them into our lives so that we live free. Because Lord, we thank you for that statement that whom the Son sets free is truly free, completely free. Hallelujah. We thank you for the freedom that is ours in you. And we thank you for the confidence it produces. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you this morning. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you this morning, Lord, that you have initiated something that we didn't deserve. You showed us mercy and you extend your grace and your love to us. And we bless you for that. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to be changed. We want to be changed to become more and more like you. We want to grow in, in, in our understanding of how to walk with you and our understanding of you. So God, I pray, reveal yourself more and more to us. Reveal your ways. Continue to imprint your life, your, your laws upon our lives, O oh God. And continue to show us how we can respond to your word and respond to your spirit and, and get free in different areas of our lives and walk in freedom and live in freedom and manifest it in our lives. Hallelujah. Lord, that we might be a confident people. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord.